squad welcome to land your bet sports betting live stream what's good everybody gonna be getting into those bets today i'll go over some what i got here and then uh, go forward i think some people already in the comments talking about wins love to see those dubs what's good free sauce diego nba got the squad in here can't have bad days if you bet right with that those units this is the first thing i'm gonna start off with real quick is like if you just bet everything straight yesterday and didn't follow the units that we that we put up on the screen about yesterday, you might not have had the best day in the world. But if you did follow along and did that correctly, and hopefully you got some of that Kyrie and Franz stuff, I know that Orlando game started a little bit early, but we ended up making 1.8 units despite the fact that we were five and six on the day, three and four in the player props, 0.3 units, lost 0.6 on the sides and totals, but made it back with that parlay because we got on to prize picks which maybe not everybody has but we were able to look at uh, the fact that Kyrie had three and a half assists available to go over on prize picks and that's how we got that really good number it was a better number than if you parlay Kyrie over four and a half assists on all the sports books where his number was at so that's where you try to find that value in some of those fantasy style uh you know sites like fantasy uh, like uh, underdog as well as prize picks so that's just one little tidbit that I like to make sure I get in that is those are two uh you know fantasy sites that I do have access to so that's how we're able to get those bets in Still going to be some good plays on not those, right? Like if you hit Kyrie four and a half assists, I believe you were still good, but looking pretty good. Live stream was interesting because did not hit a lot of these bets. Josh Hart finally went under for the first time in forever. Knicks lost as well by 13, which was how that was that game was eventually going to go the way that the Knicks couldn't really break it past like six points in the third and fourth quarters. Uh, CJ, that was a good look uh, by, by our boy in the uh, chat yesterday who was talking about how we didn't really have a good look at, at CJ. I thought I could get there. Then Brandon Ingram goes out. He's now out for two weeks, so we don't have any BI on the Pellies for a little bit. Zion went under, uh, didn't even play the fourth quarter, basically. And FVV, we should have stuck with the assist. So that was on me. Um, but we're going to move forward here with, with what we got in the live stream today. Let me go through real quick the bets I got. Quick reminder to jump into the comments and let me know what y'all are feeling as well. Uh, and we'll get into those bets with you guys. This one does scare me a little bit, but I don't know. I do think Detroit's going to keep this thing close for like a little bit, a little bit of time. I think Detroit might be able to keep this close. So it, with that in mind, if they do keep it close, Cade's got to go off. I was considering an under for Jalen Duren through the, with the logic that like maybe Jalen Duren would have to stay further away from the basket if he's guarding KP because Chris Apps would just go ahead and be shooting threes and keeping their best player on the on, down low in terms of Duren away from the basket. Wasn't I don't know if that's gonna be the case for sure. It's, there's a little bit too much fluctuation there. The dude who's gonna have the ball in his hands the whole time is Cade. He has a history of playing really well against Boston. I don't think Boston's going to bring it today. I don't know why they would try. I think Jason Tatum might end up playing. He's got props up, even though I believe he still has that questionable tag. So we'll look at that game a little bit more. If anybody has anything for, for Pistons and Celtics, I'll get that on the upcoming uh, card that we're going to look at. I got Santi Aldama because I got him at 21 and a half points and rebounds. And similar st similar story here, like outside of he and Triple J, who's likely to play in this one uh, against the Spurs, who who's going to score for this squad? They still have everybody out. Santi's been the dude getting usage when everybody's out like that. He leads the team in rebound chances. Triple J, not a really great rebounder, to be honest. Plus, dude's trying to do everything else on the floor besides get rebounds, score, be the point guard and shooter on most possessions. But with Santi in there, he has a, a sort of number two at least. And he is the best rebounder playing center for this squad. He's also kind of the best playmaker. Uh, Luke Kennard is out. Other than Luke Kennard, this is the dude in the last like five games who's been getting passes, who's been making passes, who's been getting potential assists. Which, by the way, I'm very happy to announce that props.cash has added potential assists to their uh, their homepage here in their, in their website. So you can see that right on the interface with props.cash. We'll get into that stuff in just one sec. TJD. I'm rolling with the Rook, but I'm sure some people are going to want to look at Jonathan Kaminga. I do think that total is right at about 239, 240 in this game for the Dubs and the um, and the Pacers. But either way, if you're a power forward playing against the Pacers or whatever you want to consider TJD when he's on the floor, maybe he's a center to you, you're going to have success against this Pacers squad. If he gets 25 minutes, he's gone over this every time he has this season. So he's got to be a good look at least to consider in this one. I put the full unit on him because I get the basically even money to get 18 points and rebounds, which he's averaging 21 in those minutes where he's getting uh, 25 plus. And really 23 plus is where I, I filtered that to. But it's a great matchup. I don't think Draymond plays very much in this game. If y'all are looking at the, the uh, schedule ahead for Golden State, they're about to play Miami and Orlando, a bunch of other like slobber knocker teams where it's just going to be bruiser ball, which is 
Draymond Ball, right? Uh, so he's going to be in there for that for sure. So I could see them getting the young dudes in as opposed to when we look at the no rest situations where it's a back to back. This is the front end of a pretty long uh, trip against some grueling competition. So you might want to get these rooks in now rather than have them out there trying to guard like Bam or Paolo Boncaro, et cetera, right? And trying to get rebounds in that situation. So we'll get that. You know, we got to ride with under Kelly Olinick. We got to go back to it. It's not the best matchup for us to fade him just because of the fact that uh, Chet has been weak against centers. They give up a ton of boards, which I totally get for OKC. Similar situation for the OKC. Like, I, I mean, I could see this thing being within 10 points for a lot of the game. And then at the end, maybe they just blow it up and win like a buck 20 to like 105 or something to that degree. Uh, I, I don't think there's an over in this one available just because of the fact that, like that, like I said, like I don't know how much OKC is going to need to try. I don't know how quick this game is going to be get out of hand in the first place. Uh, so if it does, then I don't really love having to rely on points OKC is still nasty at defense, whatever. But Chet, a good matchup for this dude because he's a little bit more versatile. He's going to play at the three-point line. He's going to be a little bit more of a point center at times, which is a good matchup for Chet as opposed to dudes who just want to bully him under the basket, and then that's where he's weakest, right? So I think Kelly's good for another under. I got a half a unit on him on this one. I also have a, a, a full unit on the Lakers and Philly. Got them going over in this game, and I was scared because if you look at Philly and the way they played recently – we know how bad this team is at offense. They're going to have Tobias Harris back, which I think is actually worse for their offense. We've been proving that now for a little bit. Uh, so I, I'm not necessarily like thrilled with the idea that Philly has to come along, but the Lakers have been weakest where this team is going to keep shooting from. They have been attacking the basket. Lakers have been a little bit weaker down low, always been weak above the break uh, and all that stuff. So I'm not really sure that we're going to see uh, a too, like a too much defense in this one from the Lakers who've been the second best offensive team and basically the fifth worst defensive team. I think we rely on that more than anything. And now we got Torian Prince out. So that's less defense. Torian Prince being out was the deciding factor in me not going under on Tobias Harris, which I was about to do. Um, so I'm not sure yet if I want to hit that under with Harris anymore because I was looking at it and now we don't have his best primary defender in. So obviously uh, I'm not as inclined to go under with Toby Harris. But uh, it looks like uh, Prime VA, appreciate the, the shout out here. We got uh, Underdog saying that Tatum is out. I do care about that. They are usually right on. And we also got him saying that Horford and Tatum are out. So that does make sense to me that uh, I don't think that spread actually moved. Let me share my screen and get into some of these bets that you all got here as well. What's up, yo, 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 yo. Appreciate that. Yeah, for sure. We're going to keep getting these live streams going, man. Uh, not only do I like appreciate the ability to like share what I have with you all, Y'all keep giving me some pretty good stuff to look at, too. It didn't work out quite as well yesterday, so we'll be a little bit more tempered. Um, but I do want to keep looking at what you guys have because we get some really good looks just from stuff I might not have considered yet. So uh, let me put a couple of these uh, bets up here. Let's look at Tyrese Maxey because I am talking about this game right now anyway. I'll get the uh, updated card up here for you so we can see what we're looking at. I'll put um, – I'm putting – who did I just say? I was putting already Tyrese Maxey. We're going to put him up there. Uh, and we'll look at his points and assists. I mean, he just had, he obviously he just did us dirty with that uh, last game where he did not come through, uh, but we'll take a look at what he's got for us in this matchup, which should be good as well. Uh, so I'm going to put that one on. And then we are going to look at a couple other things real quick before I get into this too. Uh, Freestyle's talking about, uh, oh yeah, SGA never scored 50. Should probably get pulled in the blowout. Then again, Sixers gave, this is uh, go see Mike. Appreciate his insights too. Sixers gave bench dues minutes in the first quarter to keep it close. So MB could get his 70. Keep that in mind. It's not false. That's not, a, that is true. Uh, so let's take a look at some, some of that stuff from the OKC game, other than uh, that Kelly Olinick under. I'll take a look at SGA. And then uh, I want to take a look at a couple other things I just saw in here too, which look good. Uh, over 207 for the Cavs and the Tim. Is it at 207 now for the Cavs and Timberwolves game from Adrian in here? Uh, yeah, that would be something I would lean over to before I would go under. I don't. Do we know if Rudy's playing? Do we know if Slow Mo is for sure playing? Kyle Anderson. I kind of need to see about that. So we'll we'll look into the. Um, I don't have anything for that game. So let me at least put it on here that we got to look at Cavs and uh and Mini because I mean if we're really thinking about how that game would go, I'm pretty sure we'd all take under stuff before we take over in that right um jared yeah so that's yeah that's the thing i'll look at Cavs and mini let's i'll make sure we look at um at jared allen too because we saw some if jared allen might go out and do just went bananas in the last game i think we all saw that um but yeah i like the uh sga the uh the sga look going back to toronto not a bad look we thought that might work out better for kelly o and it hasn't so we'll see if it's uh, a little bit better sledding for sga when he goes home uh, and then, uh, what's up, Azania? I wanted to say shout out because you were talking about the CJ McCollum uh, under that I tried to take yesterday. I would say it got impacted by the uh, the the absence of Brandon Ingram after he went to the locker room in like the early third, right? But 
either way, that was a, a good call that like he's a spot up shooter. And he, I mean, we talked about getting him early too. He hit five points right away. And then, uh, and then kind of came through in the like third and fourth quarter for that squad when they were already down, got pulverized in that one. Also not a good look on the, uh, the, 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 the spread there for that game. Let's get into a couple of these though, since we got uh, some stuff here, let me make this just stay up on the screen for right now we'll start let me start in that uh the the Cavs mini game because we got some stuff to to hunt for in that one and I'll start bringing this up right now so we can take a look at it together pull up this one right here get that to the stage get this off my screen because we already know that we're betting on Philly LA over I mean if that goes up if that goes down anymore I think it's still hovering right around to uh the the two um 225 224 and a half that it was at so we got that right here Pull that up. I'm going to look at the Cavs and minigame. Is that still? Let me look at the total in that LA game. Is it still at the same total? Because, I mean, I do think that's way closer to 230 than it is 220 at this point. And you still get that at, yeah, I mean, a couple people bet it back up after it got bet down, 225 and a half. So some people are still coming in on that. But let's look at uh, some props in that Cavs game real quick. So we look at this Cavs and mini game. Uh, always shouting out uh, props.cash. I do want to say the site that I'm going to be going to as well that I'll, that I'll push you all to is mad, propsmadness.com. Because PropsMadness.com is started by this dude, Pips, who uh, is a, ser- a really good follow on Twitter. I'm going to shout him out here, too, as well, because dude does really good work, uh, at, like really good work uh, about what he's looking at. And I believe, yeah, he's also a uh, Slovenian there. He, he's he's like, dude, I'm telling you, this dude knows what he's talking about. He started this site. And the reason that I'm already like in love with this site is because it kind of has everything in one spot for you. So he's looking at he's got like the, the shot chart right here. So you can see a player and opponent shot charts. Right now. And it shows you right here. So, for instance, if we're looking at Cade Cunningham. Right. And he, he did a little tutorial with this. You see where Cade is shooting most of his shots. Right. If you look at the opponent defense. Uh, this would be like defensive rank of the up, upcoming opposing team for him in terms of like where he would be good shooting from. And this is where they would be the worst at defending. Right. So like everything for Boston in the corners and down low, you got nothing. Once you get into the paint, you're in trouble. Uh, but it, out here is where you can get a few more buckets off of uh, Boston right here. Right. And so that's why we look at that's how we look at Cade. If you look at where he's shooting from percentage, of his points is pretty evenly dispersed. Um, he's not really great as a three-point shooter i'm be honest with you it'd be tough for me to take Cade, but i i do want to at least shout this side out i want to get a little bit more familiar with it so i can just go boom 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 when i'm showing you what i'm showing you but like it's pretty similar to props.cash in a lot of way actually a little bit more aesthetically pleasing if you want to look at some stuff but i would definitely give this dude a follow one more time i'll just show you it's a pips mba so if you just look at that for on twitter pips mba you'll definitely be able to find dude and uh and follow some really good stuff from him so we'll get into props to madness as soon as we can uh, as soon as I can really, and, and show that to you a little bit more. But I mean, look, you, you need to see like his, his stuff in specific play types. You can see where he scores from in uh, most in the season. And then when you go to these game logs, you can see a little bit more about each thing uh, than just when you cover, you know, you can't really get all this info from props.cash right now. So this is a really good site. I just wanted to shout that out because I forgot to uh, yesterday and make sure y'all knew that that was something that I'm going to be looking at moving forward. Let's look at this game right here. And I'm pretty sure we still don't know what's up with Rudy, right? I'm pull up this injury report. That's official from the NBA. I like that we get the 531 right when this stream starts um but looks like out is out yep so this is all up to date too because we got that official stuff from tatum being out etc so yeah now that tatum's out right and papa al's out andrew holiday's out y'all know what time it is it's mr army haircut patient peyton pritchard himself i do want to make that clear that i'm waiting on some more peyton pritchard stuff i mean if you i just want to show y'all what i mean like peyton pritchard's been playing without these dudes consistently as of late uh, and once he gets his hair right, then we'll feel a lot better about betting on him. But let's look at Peyton Pritchard's last 10 games. I can't really make fun of him. My shit's going to, obviously, you can see this receding hairline. So it's like he's doing the best he can. At least he's got a, a front hairline. Sometimes it's worse, though, bro. Like his hair goes all the way down to his eyebrows almost. Anyway, uh, 19 points, 23 points. This is without dudes playing the last couple games, plus blowout. And like you saw the Detroit one. So the assists have been mad high for him when he gets those minutes. You see these games where he got 38 assists, 30, uh, 35, 13, 30, like he's going to dime up. So the points and assists seem to good play because when we have that many dudes out, including Drew Holiday, which is a, a reason to play Peyton Pritchard more then you're going to get some, some uh, opportunities from him. So I'm still going to be looking at that as soon as I can get it, but let's go back to, since we don't have anything from there, I'll, I'll look at this Cleveland and uh, Minnesota game. First dude we were talking about here is Jay Allen. And obviously we don't know. That's what I was doing initially. 
before I interrupt myself continuously, is looking at whether or not we actually have. Yeah, we're going to have this be questionable for a minute. I, I would be a little bit surprised if Nas Reed plays because he was still in concussion protocol. Um, but we could see what happens with him. If it's one of those situations where it's like the best I can give you is like if dude doesn't play, then yeah, if, if he's out, then absolutely. I'm loving Jared Allen. Uh, if he's out, I'm loving over. Is it a 207 and a half right now? Is that what we said? Yeah, I'm loving over 206 and a half if Rudy's out as well. Uh, this Cavs team can can get buckets, uh, and this this Minnesota team will turn into much more of a, a fast paced team if they're playing mostly Jaden McDaniel's and and Ant Edwards without really having to wait for uh, Rudy to lumber his ass up the court and all that, right? So, uh, although Tristan Thompson is also going to do be a dude that slows that game down a ton, so I, I don't necessarily know if I have a bet for that one. I will say for players like yeah, Tristan he hasn't really been stealing minutes since he came back. How many games does he have back? Uh, one, two, three, since he came back from taking steroids, which was one of the least surprising things. And he's only averaging like fit those in the last three, like 12 minutes a game or so is what that comes out to. So it's not like he's taken too much from Jay Allen, who has been basically Hakeem Olajuwon. And his only reason this isn't at like 18 and a half is because of the fact that Rudy might play, right? Um, let me look real quick at that Minnesota schedule. We might be able to glean something from whether or not Rudy is going to play in this game if they have tough upcoming matches. If you look at Minnesota down here, this is in the, the description of the video. Hashtag basketball. Maybe it could do it with a better name, but it's still a really good site. Golden State on, on uh, Sunday. I don't know that that's enough reason to try to like preserve Rudy Gobert necessarily. So, I mean, he still could play, but it's honestly your guess is as good as mine because dude has been questionable for a lot. And at this point, like he's played a lot of those times where he's questionable. He's also sat a, a, a bunch of the recent times when he was questionable. And it's crazy at 29 and a half. I mean, that's wild. I know he's been going over slightly. It's a pretty high prop, but I think I'm gonna move on from this game. Y'all and just real quick. Let me make sure I'm not missing something, something that y'all want to actually look at. Um, I don't think we have anything. Karis LeVert assists. He, yeah, he's been going off. Um, yeah, uh, busy. Yeah, BZY, busy. Like, yeah, that's that that props madness site is gonna be fire. I'll, I gotta get that in the uh, in the description of the video as well. But that dude's been doing work for like a year or two on the side trying to get that website up, and it's bomb. So, uh, let me. Yeah, with for Karis, like it, it, I don't know if it matters who's in or out for Karis. What's his his assists have been up, obviously. Like you were talking about free sauce. It is I mean, it's been a good look for him. He's been getting over uh six and a half. And yeah, they're we're losing six and a half quick, right? You got to get seven and a half for good money on other sites right now, like DraftKings, Caesars, all got a seven and a half. That, that's Ben MGM needs to fix whatever is not pulling through to this props.cash site or props.cash needs to fix it, obviously. Um, so let, the six and a half, obviously, we start with some uh, just let me look at this this potential assist. Also, though, that is up here. I can look at that now, can I? That's kind of tight, though. They do have potential assists up here now. So if you look at what he's been at, I mean, 18 in this last game against Miami. Uh, obviously, you know that Minnesota's not giving up dimes, but as they've been playing lately, I just I want to see how much they've been limiting assists for the for uh, the um, the Minnesota squad right now. Because honestly, like I, <laughs> that's that's a lot of games of going over six and a half. If you look at opponent assists over the last ten for this team, a little bit worse. Because I'm pretty sure on the season it's better than tenth. I mean, tenth is still tenth best. I'm saying a little bit worse. It's still fire. But on the season, they've been second best. So over the last 10 games going down, I mean, maybe even the last five, if you look at opponent assists, I mean, they're not gonna, they're not gonna get outside the top 10. This is a top 10 defense for a reason. They don't give up assists, they don't give up much of anything. Let's see who has been diming up against them. Mm. Look at historical. Let's look at guards for a minute. Let's look at PGs. Honestly, he's kind of been the PG for this squad. A lot of people going over as of late, getting Jamal got his, Reggie Jackson also in the same game, and then that Utah squad. I mean, whatever you want to do with that. Colin Sexton had 10 in the previous game. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people getting their dimes here. I'm assuming uh, LeBron had a few in this one, too, against Minnesota. But, yeah, I mean, if we look at small forwards, uh, and you, you could probably consider him a, sh a shooting guard overall is what I would consider Karras, but he might be a good play. Let's let me Let me come back to that in a minute it is tough with the way that the that i don't know what's up with rudy i just keep coming back to that so he had 18 potential assists in this like game against miami who also limits assists nobody saw that coming i gotta believe and then 12 let's look at what darius is doing 12 15 11 if he got 15 potential assists we need him to get seven i still feel good about that if we look at darius um damn darius is getting potential assists too they both had 18 potential assists against uh, Miami, nine for Darius and all of them other ones for Karis. Miami is struggling right now, big time, obviously. 
Um, that's that's not a bad look, bro. If you wanted to take Darius Garland, I would not tell you no. That one uh, might be pretty good. Six and a half is a great number. Seven and a half is a little bit scarier. Uh, and Darius is at six and a half too, despite, I mean, basically at the same amount of potential assists as uh, as our guy right now, as Karras. Well, 13, yeah, basically some, same numbers. It's just between these two dudes. Maybe you do a little like five plus assists for both of them, something like that on FanDuel. That might be, I mean, it's tougher. I don't want to have to choose which dude is going to do it. Uh, five might be an okay number, though, even against this squad who at 207, it's a low total. But let's see real quick if we if we same game parlay them and their assists. Oh, you, you got to do five plus on DK. I forgot they only do the six plus here on this one. I mean, if you do both of them for six, you don't even get the negative correlation bump right there. That's tough. Minus 107. That's not really worth it for me. I don't think we're getting much there for both of them to get six. But cares might be a play bro i see you on that one for you sauce that's not a terrible look um let's see real quick uh it's busy i got you bro um d'angelo i got some from mike in here uh russell tie for lakers record for single season threes hmm he's already tied for the lakers record for threes in a single season you're saying so he would just need to get a couple more but his three-point prop in that one as well let me let me look at that game real quick and then we will look at um the uh or the sga stuff we'll look at toronto a little bit more if we go to uh d he's at six and a half dimes still yeah he has been diming i mean is the uh the three-point stuff is what you were talking about Two and a half, but that's for terrible juice right there. Yeah, it's all minus money for him to go over two and a half. I hate when they do this with the threes prop because at that point, I'm like, fuck it. I'll just take the over three and a half and just eat that juice, right? Uh, and, or just not have to eat the juice and just put a little bit fewer units on it to get the three and a half for somebody like D'Lo. Uh, like you said, Philly, I mean, they, they have been being up i guess decently well I, I can't talk too much trash i believe they have like the six best defensive rating in their last 10 if you look at uh, opponent three pointers attempted in the last we got 10 games right now yeah i mean teams are, are going to the bucket against philly a ton 18th and three pointers allowed but how about made if we do made they might be giving up a few more over here on there i mean yeah they're still bottom half of the league so that three point percentage is probably gonna be pretty good for folks against them uh, they are going to be bottom 10. Yeah. I mean, 11th worst three point percentage for them in general, the way where they've been giving it up from, let's just look at, uh, on, on FanDuel fantasy pros real quick. Also in the uh, description of the video, fantasy FanDuel pros. If we look, I mean, I would call him a point guard. I guess he's a little bit more of a shooting guard time, but let's look at the last seven games, point guard, three pointers against Philly in the last seven. Yeah. Not too many to point guards. Let's look at shooting guards in the last seven, three pointers for Philly given up still pretty good so i mean they've still been all right i would say it's mostly because teams have been going up against them and just being like let me just get all the way to the bucket when i see b-ball paul standing down low as the dude who you know so let's do last 10 games uh and go by zone and look at uh where everybody's been scoring against the squad and i'm assuming they've been taking a lot of shots down low against philly yeah a good amount field goals made actually been a little bit better in terms of that defensive field well they got the third best defensive field goal percentage down low above the break stuff is what you were talking about too if you look at Philly, yeah, you know, they're going to be giving up a good amount of attempts and the makes in the last 10, you know, still a decent number. It's going to be middle of the pack in terms of limiting teams who are shooting from above the break. So they're not terrible. There's not quite enough for me to get the four in there for D'Lo. If we look at the amount of threes he's been taking, so we know the volume. 10 in the last two and he hit, uh, what are you hitting those? Three and six. Mm. Yeah, the three doesn't seem like a bad number, but you got to get it to four to get the juice. I hate doing that unless I feel real confident in it. So if I look silly for not taking four, I get that, but I'm kind of off of that one for D'Lo. Uh, let's see here real quick, because I do have a couple of things on the screen I wanted to bring up. So we got um, the updated card, and I'm going to look at Maxi in this game too real quick, and we'll look at SGA in that uh, that Toronto game as well against the Thunder. Looking at the Tyrese Maxi stuff real quick, he really let us down in that Phoenix bl uh, blowout. His, the team scored 102, right? He's down to 27 and a half, really 20. Okay, so 27 and a half is still being hung on, on uh, FanDuel, which isn't a bad number. Uh, his last 10, he's doing this a little bit, his head-to-head -head stuff. You know, that's a lot of points. Uh, I do like points in this game, though, and somebody's got to score. So it kind of makes sense that he would be the dude to go off. I've been trashing the, the three point defense for this squad for a minute, but he's so he's on the other side of the three and a half. Right. D'Lo is like two and a half for no juice. He's at three and a half for pretty good juice here. Plus one thirty five for him on DraftKings for those threes for Maxi. Do we want to take a stab at that or do we just go points? Oh, it's so high. It's so, so high. The assist too. I mean, potential assist for him as of late. 
they got to know we've been looking at that. That's crazy that they just put it up like that. They know that we've been looking at potential assists. Uh, 13 and 12 in his last two right here. Charlotte didn't really have to care, I guess. And then Milwaukee, we scoring in that Milwaukee game. Yeah, so the the assist, who did he let us? Yeah, he let us against Phoenix. He let us down. That's a tough one. Let's look at uh, how Max, I mean, Maxie's against, I mean, point guards basically against this squad, right? If we look at points for them on the season against LA, it's going to be, yeah, they're going to be in the bottom 10. In terms of three-point makes against LA, they're going to be in the bottom, right? They're going to give up about one, two, three, four, five, fifth most right here uh, to point guards. He's a true point guard. I mean, he's got He's the main ball handler and everything. If we look at this stuff on courtside pal real quick, we take a look at Maxi. I wish I had seen a little bit more about this earlier because I don't I don't know how I feel about that for 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 Maxi at 27 and a half. But I also don't want to just like let the recency bias kind of come at me. The thing is, he didn't even take any shots in this last game. And I mean, I guess it was over pretty quick, but I mean, he only played the 23 minutes. They pretty much gave up. So that is something to take a look at. 27 and a half, though, is still a pretty sharp number from the books. You really got to take him to get 30 and go off in this one. Right. Uh, if we look at him on course, I pal real quick and we see how he does against the Lakers. Scoring you got to go down pretty far 18th and 17th. So it's not like he's been doing everything. I do want to see, I mean, he has been, you know, he's going to come off that pick and roll as the main ball handler. Let's just look at how they do real quick in terms of defensive play type for this uh, Lakers squad, the pick and roll ball handler. What are they giving up there? Possessions, a game. Yeah. They're going to be in the bottom 10 possessions, which is going to be a high frequency for them and points per possession. Been a little bit better than, than I might've thought against the pick and roll ball handler. Which is still giving up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ninth most points per game for them to that to that play. You know, you know, Maxie's doing that. I mean, it's gonna be tough to to get this without you know, because I can't split it up between uh when Joel has played and when he has not. So I don't know, but I can go team Philly. I might be able to add one more where I say player does not equal. No, that's not gonna help me though. That's not going to help me Um, because I'm just not getting a bead stats at that point. But we do see him doing this hella, right? Obviously, we know that. And for campaign as well. Can we sneak in like an easy campaign seven and a half points maybe uh, against this Lakers squad? I mean, he, he on other teams, he has played well against this Lakers team last year. Was he on the Suns at that point? Probably still when he was playing against the Lakers in this one. Uh, he probably got mad minutes without uh, a point guard in there. I think Chris Paul was already out. Mm. I don't hate campaign. Honestly, he's been getting minutes too because we see no more buddy healed out there. So it's like that three point guard lineup, but the, the point, the minutes aren't really there. Nine field goal attempts is good for him to get eight points, to be honest with you. Um, but it's might not be enough of me for me there. Eight points does seem fair for him. It's what he's been averaging right in the last bit, but yeah, for Maxi, I, I mean, I, it's another thing where it's like, I don't want to miss out on Maxi going crazy on a team that he should go crazy on. So it does kind of feel like a good opportunity. Let me make sure uh, I'm not missing something with the assist with him as well. I mean, Lakers will give up dimes, you know, I, his assist right here. It's just a matter of, are they going to try to force the ball out of his hands? And they haven't really, if you look at uh, the way that they've been giving up assist, yeah, point guards, I'm, I'm waffling on this Tyrese one for real. Uh, it does not, it doesn't speak to me <laughs> the points and assists 33 and a half that's hella too he is gonna have to somebody's gonna have to score for this team and i would prefer to go under for tobias before i went over uh not that that is he's only at 16 and a half points though the under is minus 102 for him kelly love he, he got another uh little bump in his he was at 17 and a half for a lot right he's up to 18 and a half now and we have to rely on this to not be a blowout once again which it shouldn't be but it's too it's too reliant on whether or not there's a blowout so like i obviously am not feeling uh, as good for this one uh let me get a couple more in here so we can we can look at it yeah i mean if you're gonna do delo threes bro uh adriano abdul is talking about if you're gonna do uh delo threes good ladder it's like it's not even a good ladder to me as much as it's just just take the four take over three and a half or four plus for delo in this one so you can at least get some money back on that bet right uh the points feel like they could come for him as well in in this one but <sighs> Labrizi, have to look at him. He's been scoring a lot. I've always I've been targeting his points since the. Uh, there's not anybody to guard him. Same with with AD, right? Like AD is probably gonna have like another 13 and a half rebound. Yeah, I didn't even look at it yet. 13 and a half rebound prop for AD in this one because the Philly is one of the worst rebounding teams in the league, especially since the All Star break, and it's really 14 and a half on most books. 13 and a half on Fanduel. If that's still being hung, you can still get minus 118 for that from AD. Have, I'm not I'm not ready to put that on the card between these two dudes. Let me let me put a half a uh, half a unit on Maxi here. 
the assists you can get for for decent money, five and a half. The potential assists, like we were looking at for him, pretty low, except for the last two games. LA gives up assists to his point, but let's just go for the points for him. I don't see them blitzing him and doing that. Let me put a half a unit on Maxi for the points, so we can get a bet in here. Though it's so high, like like go see Mike said, it's so high. Um, we can look at Siakam rebounds for sure. Let me put that in here real quick. I just don't feel comfortable putting putting Maxi on the card like that, bro. Uh, we're going to put up uh, the Siakam rebounds. Look at that real quick. Uh, Siakam rebs. And then I do want to look at that that game because I do have that tra Trace Jackson Davis bet in there. I do think Kaminga might be a good bet. So let's look at that while we're in that game. We'll look at Kaminga points. I think you can still get 19 and a half for Kaminga. So we'll look at that one. Uh, Maxi, bro, the, the, if I don't, if with this love, with this lack of conviction on the bet, like, why would I put this out there for y'all? I'm not going to just make a bet to make a bet. Uh, this is a scary time in the NBA. So I, I'm going to say not enough on this, uh, as well on this Cavs and mini game. Cause I don't know what to do with that without, uh, Rudy Gobert. And so I can't comfortably give anybody a bet in that one either. Um, and SGA is where we'll go before we go to that, that next game real quick. So let me look at SGA. Let me see if there's a couple other things that people want to throw on the, on the card real quick. Jimmy Butler from Adriano as well. Uh, that Miami team. I, I do think that's probably, this is finally the time to bet on Miami, right? But we'll talk about Jimmy Butler. If anybody else wants to put something from that uh, Miami game in there, I, I mean, it's probably a good moment in time. We'll look at points. We could look at threes, but dude doesn't shoot threes. So that would scare me off bat just thinking about it. Uh, I'd never get the volume in threes from him. Let's look at SGA real quick in that uh, Toronto game before we get too far from it. Because this one, I mean, this is likely to be a blowout, right? We still have uh, the, the number on this game at a, it's up to 17, dude. Like in 16 and a half, 15 and a half is still hung. Mm. People are not scared of betting this Thunder team with this uh, uh, in, in Toronto, too. That's my bad. I don't know if I said this was at home for the Thunder. It's, it's in Toronto. SGA come home. How's SGA done against this squad? Uh, if, we, if we want to try to take that as an actual 30 and a half points. One of the few people I do not feel terrified taking that because of the amount of shots he takes. 22 in his last game. He's averaging 20 and a half shots, obviously. Uh, we're talking about him versus, though, 0 for 3 head to head and one on the road where he went for 29 against this team. Not uh, those games. This is honestly where we would be benefit from looking at uh, the, the props madness play uh, thing because they do have a little bit better uh, of the, um, the game logs up there for you. Let me put in. Uh, See, because I'm not even familiar with the site, so I'm gonna be looking like an idiot trying to find everything on here. But I need to change change this from Cade, which I can't do. But you can see you get more from the gay blog. Let me not try to, like I said, let me stick to what I'm doing, what I know, because I don't know this site well enough yet. Let's look at Shy real quick. SGA versus Raptors. Let's just do that and see what it is in his career. Is there anything there? Do we have any revenge stats or like homecoming stats for this dude? Um, not really, bro. Like, I mean, this is a different defensive team. The last times he's actually played them, although he did wipe the floor with them and got 14 assists when they played, uh, at home in this last one. And that was an eight point game on the fourth. Who was even in that game for the Raptors? Still, yeah, I mean, everybody was playing though. Like there's nobody playing in this game. So it's tough for me to take it over on, on a guy like SGA when we're in this spot where it's just like, <laughs> why would he be in this game for more than however long? I mean, I, I can't even go and look at how he plays against this Raptors team. Like it, there's nothing to tell me how he would play against them. I mean, let's look at this team versus ISO ball. I, it doesn't, it doesn't matter because I can't even get the play type stuff more recently than, than just the whole season. Right. Uh, if we want to look at what would help us for SGA, I guess we could look at assists that they've given up in the last like five games real quick uh, for us, for the, the Raptors. I mean, cause even the last five, they, the only player they haven't had is, is quickly. If you look at the amount of assists they're giving up, it's still going to be super high. Like it, it's scary for me to take an under on anything for dude. The rebounds are five and a half. So the PRA are going to be where I would lean of just like, well, sheer volume of him not playing that many minutes would be the reason that I would feel good about this. I mean, he just played 33. That was a closer game. They blew the doors off of Memphis. He played 35, right? Um, so that that's tough, man. He got 30 in 35 minutes because who knows how hard he was trying. If any, if I was gonna take an over for anybody in this game, I'm going to the bench. Like I'm looking at Isaiah Joe, I'm looking at even Aaron Wiggins, uh, I'm looking at Kason Wallace. Like that's kind of where I'm at for for minutes that I expect to be coming in this game. Kason, if we look at how much has Isaiah Joe been playing? Like it's just about who's gonna be in the game for this OKC team. If it's if anybody's in this game, I and mean, this is a closer game. So you can see Isaiah Joe plays in these blowouts a little bit more. Uh, and when they need some shooting, but 
rotations being what it is, like I can't really get next to anything. Who, what, we, what do we, if there's anything specific we want to look at for shy, that would be the thing I would consider, but I don't really, I don't really have much for it, honestly, for that one as well. Just it's the national blowout association. Like free says the other day, like I, it's tough to just get in here and feel confident with a bet. So if there's nothing to, to show, then we, we, we can't be finding it. Let me, uh, let me pass on SGA. I'm passing on all this right now. If we want to come back to and change it, we can. Let's look at uh, Miami. A couple people brought up BAM and things. Uh, a couple other things from that Miami NOP game. Man, did I hate that NOP game yesterday. I cannot, like, it was, it started out beautifully. We had NOP, like, the Pellies were winning that game in the first quarter. Came back and slammed us, bro. That was terrible. Um, so for yet. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I, I feel you. He, he could have, Toronto, uh, like, he could have some Toronto love out there. I, it's not enough for me to play it. Like if I see, if I had seen that maybe he had done some stuff in the past that helped out to me, for me to go, okay, like he has gotten these points in Toronto before, but I just haven't, I don't have any like precedence, right? I don't have any use case to help me with that. So I, I'm always looking like, I, I've told you you guys before, I have a, a homie who's going to finish up this website. That's all about like, it's called silly stats, but it's exactly like that. It's like revenge stats. It's homecoming stats. It's has this dude done well in this arena specifically. So uh, what's up, Michael Marker? I see you. We 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 were talking about D'Lo assists uh, a minute ago, and uh, I, I didn't lay off. I didn't look at that too closely. I can I can look at it one more time because I'm not going to come back to that game after. But the assists for D'Lo, we were looking at potential assists for him. I don't think they were that high as of late. He's happened to gotten some dimes, right? Like he got 10 assists on 11 potential assists last game. So I'm not necessarily feeling that. The 18 against Golden uh, Golden State, this is all with LeBron, right? Because I know he gets a ton of it. Like as soon as LeBron is ever ruled out of a game, I'm going right to, to LeBron. Like look at that, right? That's, that's his assist without LeBron. So whenever you catch a lazy number, for his assist, but you can see they're juicing this way to the over for the assist because they want us to take it. Books are not our friends. Uh, they're not helping us out. They think that this is a pretty high number for D'Lo as well. That's why you get one plus 116 for him to hit that number. Uh, if you look at the potential assist, like I said, uh, that's without LeBron. If we look at with LeBron, a lot less likely to go over. It looks like he was the dude diming up in this game against Golden State and Atlanta. That's running hot, right? And that that does run us. And you can see even here, like the six is the kind of the, the, the ceiling for him. He's was he at uh, over the last few games? If you look at the last ten, he's averaging six over the last ten, right? So when this number is at like five and a half for D'Lo, when LeBron is in, it's a lot more likely I'm gonna play it than than without him. So I'm not on that. Uh, even though I like, like the points got to come from somewhere in this game. If I'm expecting over two twenty four, uh, but I do see LeBron getting his in this one. I mean, there is zero good matchups in this game for him. Maybe you throw Rui on him. Uh, the, the Philly's been getting back on defense a little bit, but they are just poo poo soft, right? Like baby poo soft down low right now. And they are basically the worst rebounding team in the league. So uh, I'm, I'm kind of, I, I don't have enough of an edge there in that one. I'm going to look at this Indy and Golden State game because I do think that this is a game that uh, it's probably about 238. 239 and it's got bet up a little bit high for me to ever take an over in this one you will not find me take an under just because this is right at about it i don't have enough of an edge with like my with my projection for the the total in this game so i'm not necessarily talking about that but i think 239 is still a good enough number to like get some overs from some other dudes here right so first thing we'll look at is siakam the thing that my first thought with siakam and rebounds is Yes, he should be able to get boards against this, this Warriors team. They become a much better rebounding team, and he is the reason for that, for Indy being better. Let's look at him on courtside power real quick. I, my, my first thought, though, too, is if there's not a lot of missed shots uh, and there are a lot of buckets going in, then that would indicate fewer rebounds for somebody like Pascal or anybody, for that matter, right? So let's look at Pascal rebounding uh, his propensity to rebound against this Dubs team. Wow, that's a good start. <laughs> Number one, in terms of, of giving up uh, rebounds to a dude like Pascal. So that makes a ton of sense. Uh, the pace, though, it's one of those things where, like, the, is the pace going to be high? If the pace is high, then, yeah, even if there uh, are a lot of made shots, there's going to be just a lot more shots in general. Let's just look at these two teams and the way that they played uh, their pace in the last, like, 10 games. Golden State has definitely been playing with a lot more pace uh, over as of late so, and on the season, to be honest with you. Uh, but we can see Indy's down here. They're at fifth fastest and Golden State at ninth fastest. So you can expect, I mean, it's a part of the season. Like these numbers for this pace are always higher. Like at the beginning of the season for the first month or two, dudes are coming out fresh. They're playing at 103 pace, 104 pace. That's average or, or, or like not at all. Uh, it, it's something that you see a lot, right? It's common is the word I'm looking for. Uh, and so now we got this all the way down to the team leading over the last 10 games is 
playing at 101 pace. So things are going a little bit slower. We were getting less free throws as well. Not that either of these teams really get to the free throw line too, too much. I don't believe. Uh, so for Pascal, though, like he is a type of dude that would do well down low against the dubs uh, either way. Let's look at his points real quick and see if we should add that. I mean, he is yeah a versatile wing that's like big and strong playing down low. Let's look at where he's scoring from real quick. Uh, and this is something that I will learn on that um, on props madness. So we could just have it on one site right there. Let's look at uh, past. I mean, for let's look at the, the opponent shooting for the dubs uh, defense by zone. And we'll go to. Um, yeah, well, we can just leave it here and we'll go to the last. Let's just do last 10 again for the dubs looking at their stuff in the restricted area. Teams not taking that many shots. Second fewest shots, uh, but it's going to be a high percentage. Yeah, fourth highest percentage if you want to take him down there. You know that Pascal is taking the bulk of his shots from down low. I don't believe he's been shooting too many threes with this team. So let's go to player shooting real quick and look at that for Pascal. We'll go by zone, and we'll just limit this to uh, the, the Indiana Pacers, not the LA Clippers. And look at that real quick on NBA stats page. If we look at where he's shooting from, Obviously, it's going to be down here. He's taking the most shots down low because Miles Turner is not a big man on offense. Uh, taking the most shots from right there, probably the most mid range, too. Yeah. Not really taking very many threes for Pascal. Uh, but I don't, not that they have a good defense. But if you want to take shots down there, they're the, the Warriors are giving up the, the fourth highest field goal percentage down low, right? That's the thing about the Lakers, too, is like they have not been good at defense down low. Let's not worry about that right now. If you look at in the paint, uh, non RA, they're also giving up a ton. Pascal's a good look. His his points are at twenty one and a half. Has he played? He has played this team on the um, on the six on the Pacers, right? That that was with him on the Pacers, I believe. Let me just look at uh, Pascal real quick. Pascal Siakam last uh, four games versus Warriors. If we look at that on Stat Muse, which is super helpful. Yeah, the one he played, he got the eight boards there. What happened in this game? Yeah, the Warriors blew him out in Indiana. Pacers were not – they were not good. Obviously, Tyrese was terrible in that game. They that, that This was over hella fast, right? Yeah, this was 11, 12 at half, 19 in the, going into the third that they were up. So this was pretty much done by the third. Even had Benny Matz out there, though. Yeah, I mean, Pascal, I would say if he, he still got 30 minutes, six for 11 from the field. He didn't take that many shots. This is pretty early on, though, right? This is February 8th, so he's not been a pacer for very long. If you look at his last bunch of games, it's tough for the points for him, though. Let's look at last 10 again for him on the points. Yeah, 21 and a half is high. I mean, we do expect more in this game. 29 and a half is high. I would say the rebounds are the play. It is juiced all the way down. If you can get minus one twenty on Fanduel, I'll put a, I'll put a half on that. That's a good look. Let's let's add Pascal to the card real quick. The PR Prime VA. That's my thing about him uh, and the and the points and rebounds is like the, the points feel high for him. If we look, I want to see what his volume has been in terms of shots as of late. Fifteen to get twenty one and a half. That's efficient. If he does get to it right, 18, 22 is is pre inefficient if he gets to it. But it's a lot of shots, and I do expect him to take a decent amount. But in this last one, taking eleven shots to get twenty two and a half points or twenty two points rather, that's that's not it for me. Uh, I'm, I'm on the rebounds with him. Obviously, we love how much he's been doing it. Let's get the uh, rebound chances real quick before I get too crazy. Players, and we'll look at uh, tracking. This is all the player tracking data we always talk about. We'll go to rebounding for him, uh, and we'll make this just the Pacers so we can see how he's been doing in the last, let's call it 15 games, because I think that's a deep. Last 15 is probably a decent enough sample size for him since he's been with this squad long enough. So we look at rebound chances last 15. Yeah, I mean, when Miles Turner comes uh, is in there, he's still getting rebound chances. He's just a 27% contested rebound chance percentage. Come on, man. Like, you're so much better. You're so much bigger than so many people. Pascal, also not great, though. 26% on 11 and a half. And he's getting, you know, some contested boards. But 8.2 in that time frame. If we look at the last 15 for him on here, how often does he hit that? 10 out of 15, though, right? So he's still getting those eight boards consistently. So if you still get eight right here, I think that's a decent look for him. Minus 120. We'll add Pascal to the card right now. And get that in there. Let me uh, go through a couple of these bets too that I do have up. We're finally hit one that we're going to take. Pascal, we can get minus one twenty on FanDuel, so we're going to take that um, minus one twenty per Pascal. Uh, 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 we got to take over seven and a half boards, over seven point five rebs for Pascal minus one twenty FD, and let's put half a unit on that right now. All right, we're going to save that. 
uh, this this game as well. And, and there was a couple other things we want to look at from this game. Yo, Mr. Mechanical, uh, I'd, be, I'd be wary of Bruce Brown. That dude is a trap waiting to happen, bro. Paris LeVert with the triple-double out here. I see you, Dustin Wiles, Wilden out here. I, I feel it. Uh, I mean, look, if you're going to take uh, Karis to do anything, I think a double-double is probably still going to get you some pretty good money. You can look at Keldon Johnson real quick. Let me put Keldon on there as well. I don't have much from that uh, Memphis game, so I need to add a little bit of something. We'll put um, – what do, what, do, what do we just talk about we'll talk about um jesus christ bro we got yeah bruce brown that's all i'm saying is like be be a little bit wary of him let me finish putting this stuff on the crowd put keldon on there <clears throat> yeah curry could be scary if they decide to blitz him but let's look at that well um bro this add is real uh, uh, uh keldon johnson i see you talking about george kneeing in there too that might be a good play let's put keldon in here anything else that we get from that um from that spurs game i want to look at slash i'll just say that we're gonna look at spurs sas and um uh and memphis i think that game might be an over honestly uh 216 and a half that might could be an over uh, but yeah uh let me just show you what i mean with bruce brown real quick because like he i bruce brown is a dude that needs to be unlocked right like say by a Tyrese Halliburton or a Nikola Jokic, some dudes that he used to play with that would really, really continue to help him if he was still on their team. But he chased the bag, respect, he got his 20 mil. Like when push comes to shove, Bruce Brown's not going to be telling his kids necessarily, like they'll watch some highlights, but I mean, he's going to be showing them the, the money that he has and the lifestyle he shows them. But if you look at Brucey, one of my favorite players, bro, but not it as the dude he just ain't it as the dude right like look at all this red here for these props that you still want to say like i should take it but it, i would say too like if we look at players real quick and we look at passing and look at that um the stuff for the the toronto raptors something i want to show y'all is that like when a point guard is a point guard not only is he making the passes he's getting passes as well he's receiving a ton of passes because uh, offense in the nba with a point guard at the top of the key is going to be a dude and let me get to the last uh five for this team emmanuel's only played like three of those right so 12.7 assists all right let's just do the last three because emmanuel played three this is so wrong bro even let's just do last three we don't always get tracking data i forgot that so you can see even the last two da, 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 like bruce brown 8.7 potential assists passes made 40.7 like kelly olenix getting more passes made than he is right and passes received so he is kind of standing at the top of the key is what i would gather because passes received is at 42 which is going to be more than anybody else you can see iq was clearly that dude right he was getting 72 passes and uh and 63 and a half that he was making so like bruce brown in there even without like iq it doesn't matter you like the, the points haven't been there in the last three without him we don't know how much he's going to play because of that the, the blowout potential look at these no, look at these minutes for him like they're these games are so terrible that they're like why would we play bruce brown that much so that's my only caution with bruce brown is like be aware of that we got a couple people talking about Keldon now so it does look like i gotta get to that game i want to finish up though since you y'all know i have this the the attention span of a fucking goldfish uh let me at least show you like curry points real quick yeah it's scary it's scary to take him there's this weird phenomenon in golden state where like they don't want to have to rely on him but then they're like well we need to win this it's being caught between generations right like they want to play their young bros but they also need to get theirs um so it's a little bit terrifying let's look at uh i i, I cannot trust it like the the, the, the shot attempts are, are gonna 27 and a half on 18 shots yeah it's it's steph curry it's the threes too it's at least four and a half it's probably five and a half right is this three-point prop Four and a half for bad juice. So yeah, if you want anything like minus one forty two on here, they they got they got stupid with him at this point. Uh, there's there's better value in other places uh, in this game. If I'm looking at, uh, I do like the Pascal look for him to to be a big body down there, especially if he's playing against like TJD and Kaminga. My thing that I keep coming back to is I don't think Draymond's going to be getting as many minutes as you might predict. If you look at the schedule upcoming for this uh, Dub Squad, if you go to Advanced Basketball hashtags uh, Basketball dot com and you look at the upcoming schedule for Golden State. Uh, they're playing Indy. Then they got Minnesota, Miami. And if you go to the next week uh, and you look at Monday, on the 20th of the next week, right? For Golden State, you're looking at where are you at, Golden State? Oh, this is just playing that day. My bad. Uh, if you look at, let me pull up. This is the week we got here. I know they have a few more tough games. Golden State. So it's going to be, then they got Miami, then they got Orlando, right? So that's three tough games in a row that I think Draymond's going to be rested for. That is my thought process looking ahead. Remember to always look at the schedule coming up, not just the schedule looking back. And that's why it's like pre 
back to back moment in time where you can look at like the other power forwards on this team to kind of get theirs, right? If we look at Draymond's minutes, uh, who's he playing minutes against, right? Uh, this was Memphis. This is a, a game that they got beat to shit, I believe. So if we actually, let's look at the last five. Oh, I'm looking at the last five. Last five, yeah, the Knicks, that was not a good game for them. Uh, Draymond did not do much in that one. And he was getting uh, some fouls in that game, I believe, as well. So, like, I think that he's, I'm not saying necessarily you take that under for Day Day. Although, I mean, you might actually could, to be honest. Because if he's not getting the minutes, you might could take the under PRA for him. If my, my logic holds sound, honestly. The boards are at eight and a half. I, like, I don't know how he'll have time to do it. If you like overs for the uh, other homies here, like Kaminga, he has not been getting the rebound chances. That's been scary. That's a scary bet. But he has been trying to score. And I do think he can get his in this one. So if you can still get 19 and a half. The thing is, I'd love to trace Jackson Davis, too. I showed you guys that in a minute ago where I took TJD. Let me show you what I mean and why I like it. Because I do think he's going to get 25 minutes. So if you do think he's going to get 25 minutes, he's done that every game that he's been in there for that amount of time. 17 and a half PR is a very hittable number while we could still take uh, our, our boy uh, Kaminga as well to get his points in this one. I really, really, really want to take points for Kaminga. Uh, it's, re it's really tough for me to stop because like, it is a number that he's consistently hit. We do need him to play the minutes, obviously. So let me put this at, I mean, if he plays 30, we're good to go. I cannot guarantee you 30, though, is the problem. Let me put this at uh, 28 and see what that does for me. Because 28 feels like a good projection minute. I mean, it is my projections of minutes for him. If you look at the last bunch of games, he's played at least 28 minutes, right? Over in uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 of 6, 6 of 7, 7 of 8, right? That he's played that. And the 28 minutes that he, yeah, I mean, if you, if you give him to 30, he's going to hit that at an even higher number. How many games has he played 30, though, recently? Like, because he's only played 28. And he's missed a few games here in the last 15. Obviously, in the last five, that's even better. Yeah, so, I mean, this is a number that if you think he's going to hit play 28 minutes, you should take this. And I do think he's going to do that. So I am going to hit Kaminga as well because I'm going to feel stupid if I don't, to be honest with you. So I'm going to throw Kaminga in here and get another uh, another bet from this uh, this game right here. I got Kaminga points in here. So I'm going to take over 19 and a half for the, uh, for the point five. Over 19.5 points is minus 120 on FD as well. We'll take that for 0.5 units. That gets the green check. And put that in there for Kaminga so we have a little bit more of an updated card. Save that, bring it up. Let me just show you guys what I have right now for the, the new people in the stream right now, in case you missed the earlier bets uh, that I put on the other projection video. Reminder to subscribe to the page if you would. Appreciate y'all uh, supporting the live stream and the, the YouTube channel as a whole because I do bring these videos out. I'm for sure getting a video out tonight, not waiting for tomorrow morning, getting ahead of the Saturday stuff. I do believe we can get some uh, some value there. I took Cade over on the PRA. He, our boy loves playing against Boston, so I'm going to continue to roll with that. I took Santi Aldama to go over the 21 and a half PR for minus money, uh, minus 120 on FanDuel. But I put, if you see for Santi, I love this bet. I took the 1.2 units on that so I can get a full unit back if this hits, which I believe it will against the Spurs uh and so he's leading the team in rebound chances I like the rebounds for him in this game Spurs give up everything to big men love this bet this was the only thing that scared me from just throwing Kaminga on the early card but I, I'm just sitting here with y'all like I'm gonna feel like an idiot if I don't get Kaminga love in there and, and give him a good bet Kelly O you know we're fading him uh fade him until he he proves us he can do anything else uh besides just sort of be on the floor uh and just get some get some cardio in for for Kelly O so I love that and I do love this over for for this game right here but I keep getting scared to take overs I don't think I I, am I, I still have I still pass on Maxi so I'm not even gonna go back into that uh but yeah let me let me move on to a couple of the other ones we want to look at here i do want to uh look at that game for the uh the spurs and the, the memphis grizzlies so let me get that up for y'all real quick and get in here we, we might get out of here in the next 10 minutes i know we got stuff to do right uh clay under four and a half rebounds yes sir what a full court ball that might be a thing uh mr mechanical is talking about yeah we, we, we still have something to look at in this indie game right we can't get too far away from this just yet before we go to spurs and memphis like Come on, what are y'all going to be watching tonight between those two games when uh, when the when the Dubs and Pacers come on? You're going to watch the Dubs and Pacers. We like offense. Nobody wants to watch Santi Aldama try to score on Victor Wimbanyama, except for we're going to take his points. Uh, let me see what we, what else we had. We had Chris Paul love. Now, why would Chris Paul come in this game more than anybody else is a good question. Um, in terms of how Chris Paul performs against this Pacers squad, probably not going to get dimes as much. That might be a look, right? We know the Pacers are a team that don't give up assists. If you look at Chris Paul, for instance, I'm very confident that the Pacers do not give up assists to his playmaker type. So if we go to assists playmaker, 
Indies, yeah, they're still 18th, giving up. They're basically 13th best at limiting assists to his playmaker. If we look at Steph, uh, they're, I mean, are, th- how do you not double Steph? But like this team doesn't double team. I know that for a fact. So that's why somebody like Steph is also not going to get, they got the ball in their hands. They're a playmaker up top. You don't get assists against this team because they let you get yours. So if I was going to take a bet on Steph or anybody like that, I would be taking Steph to go over on the po- on the points and under on the assist, to be honest with you. If you look at points for Steph, uh, am I still on Steph? Yeah, if you look at points for Steph and you go to shooter, fourth best, giving up the most of his scoring. That's helpful. I mean, it really is helpful because if you look at like what they don't do, what they do not do is def- is double team. You can tell that because if we go to team defense real quick and we look at, uh, let's look at Bob play type and look at either, we could do ISO, um, we could do, I know they're bad against ISO because they don't double team. So if you don't double team and you get a really good one-on-one player into the ISO, like they get put into it nine times a game, third most, second most of you time with Cleveland, they give up the most points per possession, the most points per game. How often is Steph playing in ISO? I mean, as much as he can. And then he also uses that. Um, he obviously uses that ball screen as well. How often are they getting our boy in, in, in ISO per game? Stefan Wardell Curry. So that's not really their offense. They they get him in good spots, though, obviously. And he's going to be the dude doing it the most for Golden State. So let's filter that. Yeah, I mean, they don't run ISO because they run team ball, right? Like, in fact, Chris Paul is running the most ISO because he gets to the to run the second unit and do what he wants. But uh, it's more pick and roll ball handler stuff, I got to assume, right? For our boy Steph, according to him against the rest of the league, he's still going to be in the top 90th percentile top like 12 15 for how often he's doing it you know he's doing it the most on his squad as well though i'm sure we get some uh chris paul love in there but still look at the amount of possessions he's doing that per game again seven and a half points per game if we look at team defense versus the uh pick and roll ball handler we know we know indiana is going to be giving it up show me what i want to see right 22 second second most the worst in terms of limiting possessions points per possession at points Steph is that dude. Uh, I wouldn't be too scared of Steph having a night tonight, to be honest with you. Uh, so 27 and a half points can be scary. Against this team last time, he had 42. Do we want do we want to ladder Steph and predict him to go bananas tonight? I don't I, I kind of do, right? Um, yo, facts on Kaminga. Steve Kerr is pissing me off, bro. Like he's been pissing me off. Kaminga had to call him out in the media just to get him to give him time. Crazy annoying. I am gonna look at uh at Clay under four and a half uh point points and rebounds let me know what you mean by that uh full court ball because you said four under four and a half points but i think maybe you meant rebounds let me know what you think about that i'm gonna take i'm I'm gonna take steph is it like (laughs) it's it's more of a steph game than it is a a clay game right a claim let me look at clay real quick just how for uh full court has him how are they against this yeah they're gonna be good against the spot up because they don't give up um well no they still give up points to clay they give up points to shooters if you can get your shot off but I, I I would say that Clay's way more dependent on the the spot up right. So if we look at team uh, spot up players and we go to defensive right here for Indy, they are bad, bro. They're just bad on defense. Um, but in terms of the possessions per game, yeah, they're giving up the fewest possessions to spot ups because they don't double, like I said, which is the f- lowest frequency. They're actually not bad in terms of points per possession and points per game on the spot up. They're giving up the fewest because they don't double team, right? We been said this. So if they don't double team. Then this is where there's a little bit of discrepancy between Clay and this squad right here. But who do you think is 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 the the number one catch and shooter on the uh, on the Dubs right spot up stuff, offensive? Uh, Clay's probably going to be getting some of that the most per game uh, in the league, right? Uh, if we look at Clay, put him somewhere in. He's going to be somewhere on this first page, and know he's going to be leading the team right in terms of Golden State catch and shoot. Look at that. Kaminga's spotting up more than him these days. That's crazy. Points per possession for Clay. I mean, that's where he scores off of. That's crazy for Kaminga. It does help our, our over, though. Um, rebounds. No, okay. That, I appreciate that. Rebounds for, for Clay. I mean, they moved it to three and a half. Yeah. So they were, that was, that was a sharp look by you, too. For, for Clay, though, I, I can't support Clay scoring in this game, right? Like, w- what's his number at right now? Where are you at, Clay? 16 and a half. Do you all remember a time where Clay would just consistently be at 22 to 24 and a half points? This is what happens. Uh, aging is cruel. What, Clay's been doing his thing lately, so I, I thought this might be a little bit higher. His shot attempts per game, he's at 14 to get 16 and a half points. Doable. Three and a half point prop. What's he at here? Three and a half made threes. Minus Only minus 125 to the under because he's been doing this so consistently. 
He did have, I mean, a time that was last season, though. This is a little bit different now. I mean, I, I cannot condone taking a clay over. That's for sure. I'll tell you that right now. The spot up stuff does make me feel a little bit better. Like they would be limiting what he wants to do. So I would lean clay under there. But let's look at his rebounds. Like you were saying, three and a half now. The under is minus 150. The hell are you talking about? Nobody thinks this dude's going to get boards in this one. That's fine. Let me put Steph on the card. And if, if, if he does us dirty, then he does us dirty. But I'm going to put Steph on here just because, I, I mean, I know that's where they're bad at defending. I know that's why he's going to be shooting from where they're bad at defending. They're not going to be good versus his type of player. We're taking over 27 and a half points for Clay, or excuse me, for Steph in this one. That gets the green check mark. What's his stuff at real quick? This is this is more of a Steph game than anything else. Friday night, time to show out, right? Is this game on ESPN? <laughs> Do we care? That should help us. Uh, 27 and a half points. Best number I can get for Steph is minus 112 on FanDuel, but I still like that. I'll have to make that one here in a minute because 3330. Uh, minus 112 on FanDuel. I like that. Let's take uh, him for 0.5 as well. For Steph Wardell Curry, get the green check mark on our boy. And then look at a couple other things real quick before we dip out of here. Yeah, the rebounds are gone. I feel that. Oh, well, kind of lost out on that one. Yeah, ACL tear will ruin that career, bro. It's tough. Yeah. Um, Diego says Clay's running pick and roll with uh, with TJD. Yeah, I mean, I, I would still lean on that being the the thing that um, that that Steph is doing more than, and Chris Paul is doing on the second unit with him. Uh, those two dudes are running a lot together. So. Mr. McCann comes in talking about uh, Sohan over assist. Let's look at that real quick. Only other thing I want to look at here is Pajemski with you guys because uh, somebody brought that up, and I'm always interested in what Pajemski is going to be doing. We got Pajemski at nine and a half points, has not been scoring much lately. He's going to be going up uh, probably against TJ McConnell a little bit more. I don't, um, although he has been in the starting lineup as well as of late. So it's tough to, to predict that lineup with Kerr, to be honest with you. I don't think we have a lineup report yet for um, for our boy for the the golden state warriors at least we know we got yeah rudy's gonna be a game time decision so i'm I'm just off of that cleveland minnesota game for anybody that was asking me about that that's too tough man um oh look at russ could come back that would be dope but yeah we don't have anything for this golden state game yet so uh i don't know exactly what's gonna happen there with um with who is and who is not in i don't think there's any injuries there let me move on to at least that san antonio game and kind of go from there um Make sure I'm not missing anything. I just, bro, I hate talking about Sohan. No offense to, to you, Mr. Mechanical, but just like that that dude is sporadic and erratic for sure. So yeah, MB8, I'm on that same look with you in terms of really liking B-Pod as soon as uh, CP3 is out and you know that he's going to be running that second unit a little bit more. He's actually been starting now that CP3 is back. No Round Brown, what's good, bro? We like uh, CP3 over eight and a half points. I don't hate it. Like there, There's probably some stuff for CP3 in here to be dominating on that second unit. Like, God bless you, TJ McConnell. You're not going to be the one handling CP3. Look at TJ McConnell. Is this the best backup point guard in the history of the NBA? Honestly, like it's crazy what this dude is still doing. TJ McConnell played like TJ McConnell played basketball in college like 12, 13 years ago. So it's crazy to think about him on uh, Arizona, and he's still doing what he does in the league. Chris Paul, the, the shot appetite, is that going to be there for him? I mean, eight, nine, seven, you got to be pretty efficient, right? And I mean, he's only gotten his field goal percentage has been pretty high when he gets his. Obviously, it's going to be the correlation. I don't hate the look there for Chris Paul points. Um, what we were looking at with Chris Paul against this team, once again, if they don't double and what they're going to do is just play that sag defense and he's going to run that pick and roll. That's why it's like, who's ever the ball handler in the pick and roll. I kind of like to get theirs. So like Curry and Steph, like, yeah, you can see he's a, he's going to be a scorer against them. He's going to get his dimes too. Uh, he's, I mean, he's Chris Paul. What's his assist at again uh, for CP three. If we look at assists, Six and a half. Give me a mother loving break for the backup point guard. 13 and a half potential assist, though, over the last bunch of games. So, like, he needs to get a 50% rate on his thing. Not the, I mean, it's, it's good for, for the, the hit rate, right? If he's getting 50%. But yeah, you can see that's juiced way up. I, I think the points by themselves would be a good bet. Um, the minus 122. He is scoring. He is the ball handler. They are giving up points in that ball handler role to him, as we looked at a minute ago. So, um, yeah, let's get it. Let's get it with Chris Paul. We got Chris Paul and Steph in our thing here, which, bro, it hit yesterday. We took Amon Thompson. We took Jalen Green. Both both cashed, right? Uh, I'm not worried about that. So let me let me throw Chris. That's not a lot of points. Let me throw it in there. I got three dudes going over their points on the dubs, though. 
whoo, that's that's risky. I, it's it's the amount of shots that he's going to take, but I do think that elbow jumper is going to be there for our guy, don't you? Like, if he makes five shots, he's good to go. Four, he's not getting to the free throw line. There's no way, even though he is the the cell foul god. Yeah, so we're not getting any points from him at the free throw line. We need him to hit his his like he's got to go four of eight from the field to get us to eight. Um, he'd really have to go five of eight from the field. That's what scares me, honestly. Right? Like, we know that his minutes will be. Uh, 25 if he gets 25 let's see what happens if he gets 25 minutes real quick we need him to get 25 if we get him to 25 minutes but keep him down to like let's just have it be 25 uh or let's do 25 to 28 if he gets 25 to 28 minutes how often is he going over this points prop pretty consistently in the last 10 but it's still not a guarantee he's still only taking he's averaging eight points in that time frame and he's taking seven and a half shots steph missed a couple of those games i'm gonna lay off the the chris paul because i know the volume is going to be there for steph so i don't love it as much for cp3 I, I, I gotta stay off that one for now um let me see if there's anything else we want from this game real quick before i dip uh, 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 yo no no cap the euro games are stupid if y'all haven't seen it but yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna look at the uh the the, the san antonio game real quick and then i think we gotta go uh hopefully you guys saw the earlier picks let me just run i'll run through those again before we dip and we'll have this updated card up i only put two more bets on the card i took kaminga at the bottom you can see and i took siakam as well uh to get his boards i took kaminga to get his points so i do like points in that game is what i'm saying but i think you know one what we say uh two 239 230 240 is a good number for that game so there's not necessarily any help that we're going to get there on a side or total if we look at this squad real quick and we i mean i already hit santi aldama and his pr did i get good value on that 21 and a half yeah it's pretty good value i mean i got it at like minus 120 so it's not terrible um and you can get minus 111 at caesars right now if you'll have an account at caesars if we are looking at i mean i'll look at sohan real quick what's he been doing <laughs> if we look at his points yeah, I mean, he's over in 6 of 10 in terms of the 12 and a half there. I hate taking points for him. He is so gross when he's shooting. If y'all seen that sh that uh, that shot for him, it is duty, uh, painful to watch. But the uh, the assist for, for Sohan, two and a half, right? No juice on it. Hmm. It's just like his threes, right? It's the same kind of nonsense with these threes. If it's like you got to take over two and a half if you want no juice. Potential assist at five a game. That's... Yeah, let's look at Keldon. <laughs> Let me get off of this. Let me look at KJ real quick uh, and look at his points. I know uh, we were talking about KJ stuff real quick. Let me let me find that in the comments before I move too far. I think it was points that we were just looking at, right? Um, yeah, points for Keldon. If we look at that for KJ against us, it's tough, bro, because like my, my, my tools don't always work as well when we've got Memphis in this iteration of itself. Can I really trust any numbers that I get for uh, them against a dude like uh, like Keldon Johnson? But let me see, because Keldon Johnson's a pretty unique player. So I do like using Court Powell for somebody like Keldon Johnson, who you can't just say is a small forward or a power forward. Like he's he's a tweener, right? For sure, he's he's got that the the ability to to, to do multiple multiple things on the floor. Not always great, but uh, if we look at his shooting versus Memphis, I mean Memphis D's been pretty good all season. Yeah, they, they're giving up 13th the most to his scoring player uh, profile. If we look at the rebounds for him and the rebound profile, this is where you might be able to find some value for Keldon is his ability to have a mismatch down low. And this Memphis team has turned into a bad rebounding team for real. Like if we look at Memphis, uh, we go to their uh, rebound percentage under advanced stats on NBA stats.com. And we look at them basically since everybody got hurt. Let's just look at the last 15 games rebound percentage for Memphis is going to be all the way down at... 19th right this is a team that used to just dominate the glass with everybody as soon as they give up everybody big down low became pretty soft down low uh if we look at Keldon over the last bunch of games with his boards has he been boarding to get five and a half you get plus money so yeah they I would love four and a half rebounds for Keldon Johnson if you wanted to add that to anything let me do my thing real quick sorry if you I mean uh real quick if you're in New York you have like uh underdog and, and prize picks don't you let me let me know because I know I got my New York homies in here um and I'll be there actually in a few months. So I might have to, uh, I might have to see if I could bet down there, but yeah, I mean, if we look at, let me uh, go to NBA and look at Keldon Johnson rebounds real quick. Cause like, this is one of those things when it's, when we're on the cusp, right. And what I mean by the cusp is you take five and a half rebounds for Keldon, you're going to get really good juice, but that's because that number is right on the kind of cusp of where his average rebounds are. Like look at the last 10, five and a half, right. Uh, that he's averaging. If you look at on the season, five and a half that he's averaging. So that's why they like to put it right there. Cause that's the number they, they're like, look, if you want this, you're going to take a gamble and you're going to get good reward on your return. Pretty good. If, if you want to take four and a half, like if we pull up uh, a regular book real quick, like FanDuel, 
and we go to the NBA odds for Keldon Johnson, uh, and we see what his rebounds are at there. I'm going to go to rebounds. If we take him on his rebound prop right here, it's going to be great money for great odds for over five and a half. If you take him for over four, you know, four plus, obviously you get real bad juice uh, because we would need a four and a, uh, like a more of a four and a half line there. You can't, if you take five plus, let's do that on DraftKings because they usually have the, the five, 10, five, eight, 10. And FanDuel usually has the even like, so when you take alt rebounds for somebody on FanDuel, you're going to get the option for four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, and 16. Who's who are we at here? Victor, for Victor to get 16, obviously. But if you go to DraftKings and you go to alt rebounds for somebody in there, you're going to see it listed at like five, eight, 10. Uh, maybe you get 12, but let's look at rebounds here. So same thing, five, it's even money for him to get over five and a half right here. And if we look at his alt stuff real quick, and we go down to his alt numbers, you get five, you get eight, you get right. Okay, so five plus for him is minus 9,195, right? So if you want the like over four and a half, you're talking about minus 9,195. If you want the over five and a half, talking about like even money. If we go to prize picks and we compare this because it's not a regular sports book, and we just look at rebounds, well, let me just search for Keldon. So we just pull up his stuff, right? If you look at Keldon in here, over five rebounds is going to be not great juice because we know that if we put two together, well, uh, yeah, you still got to put two together. So it, it probably is not is going to be right about the same amount of value that you would get on prize picks for to go over five or more because you also got the push possibility. The point I'm trying to make is don't only use the, the regular sports books. There's going to be times when you find these bets where it's like this dude's that terrible juice to go over at this number, but really good juice to go over one fewer. Then try to see if you can find that that third entity to help you out like prize picks or underdog, and they're going to have some better stuff for you in there. So uh, yeah, Nigel out in New York says you do get those, but you can't bet on college props. That's that's fair. Um, but I think price pot, price picks is going away in some spots too, like maybe NYC or something like that. But either way, let me uh, let me say say that for Keldon, the over five and a half. I don't, this is what the other thing they need in here is rebound chances. I don't think they've got that yet on this one, right? They got potential assists, but we don't have rebound chances. So let me look at rebound chances for Keldon as of late. Uh, and I do think there's going to be some missed shots in this game, obviously, when you're talking about playing uh, two bad offenses. And yes, I'm calling the Spurs offense bad. Uh, and also with Wemby in there, they're way better uh, at rebounding. But all season segments, let's do last 10 for Keldon and get this to uh, the Spurs, Los Spurs right quick and see what he's done in the last 10 rebound chances in the last 10. Look at Victor. What a crazy man. <laughs> uh, we don't even get him at. 10 right rebound chances so that's a lot that we're asking of him in the boards uh even though he is good for rebounds it's not necessarily the volume that we're looking for mm. 30 minutes nine rebound chances yeah he can't get on the floor very much because it's just not a good mix and they're playing so 33 minutes because i guess they still want him to be the point guard but he's at eight boards and 14 chances per game that would be the only thing and he's at six and a half here to go over i mean he's been boarding up and been getting the rebound chances and i would bet he's a better look for the rebounds than than keldon let me look at uh sohan real quick and then i gotta get these bets in shit it's already 42 on the hour yo um but everybody comes in maybe we should be doing some live betting too because people be coming in the stream hella late and this, we're about to get into stuff rebounds for uh jeremy against the squad he's still gonna uh yeah still gonna be good against uh memphis i would probably lean towards him to get the boards to be honest with you if we go back to that player rebound yeah they've been bad giving up boards obviously memphis and and he's been getting a ton of rebound chances with all them minutes so that's a pretty good look at six and a half for oh it's bad juice damn i thought the six and a half was pretty good juice we lost out we still get six six and a half minus 122 i'm gonna throw half a unit on that just based on the volume and where he's been at um, the, per, the specific matchup, I would love to be able to see who he's going to be matched up against. Let me see if I can see that real quick before we get out of here. And then we got to dip in terms of, uh, I got to look at teams. Let me go back to this teams on, uh, so let's look at the Spurs and the last time that they played this Memphis Grizzlies squad. See if we can get anything from that for his matchup. And what I'm looking for there is when a guy like Sohan is guarding somebody who's out on the three point line, right? Then that, that means that I don't love the, the chance for him to get rebound quite as much uh, when he's guarding somebody that's a little bit closer to the basket usually. And that's where he's standing. Then we're in a much better situation for him to get that. Let's look at the last game. I think we were already in 
full tank mode for both the or well, for Memphis at that point. Um, Sohan in the last game only got two boards against this team playing 27 minutes. He's up to about 32. He got the points, but he was still splitting time. I mean, we saw some Malachi Branham in that game who we have not been seeing much of at all. This was, yeah, this was still their starting squad too. So this isn't going to help me because I was going to go to matchups and see if we could see who was guard defending, uh, Sohan, but it's really not going to matter at this point or not who he's defending. So if we look at defensive player in matchups and we take Jeremy Sohan here, he was guarding, Jaron Jackson Jr., who is going to play in this game, you'd think that'd be good for him getting boards, but Triple J plays at the three-point line too. So if he's guarding Triple J in this game, that might be tough, honestly. Um, yeah. Yo, I, I feel you on this. Uh, prize picks can be trash uh, in, in a lot of ways. The only time that prize picks is good is when it has gives you better juice than what you would get on another sports book. I have an account to Odds Jam at this point, which is very helpful for comparing everything. I'll be showing you all the Odds Jam stuff as well here in a little bit so we can get that. Uh, yeah, I got the Kaminga over on points. Cut the check, too, so you can see that. Let me bring that back up for you all. Uh, save this. I'm going to pass on uh, – actually, let me pass on Keldon real quick. Uh, I don't feel enough of an edge in that one. I considered the Sohan rebounds. If he's going to be going up against Triple J once again, that doesn't make me feel great, to be honest. So my favorite bet from that game, just so y'all are still with me, is uh, Santi Aldama. That's the dude that I'm going to be running with uh, in this one for him to get his points and rebounds, which you can still get. If you see some of the reasoning there, I do think he's going to be playing. Uh, and we'll, and that's 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 kind of my favorite spot to go. So that's where I'm at with that one. Uh, I don't think I have anything else from this. And there's nothing else I really wanted to look at with y'all, to be honest. Uh, I know we were talking about a couple other things a minute ago. But the uh, the stuff, for, the last thing I was looking at was points for LeBron. Um, and even rebounds for LeBron against this doo-doo ass rebounding team his 24 and a half points so his rebounds and points combined is at 32 against one of the worst teams in the league or no they're playing philly but one of the worst rebounding teams in the league yeah i mean i think my card is full bro i think I, I'm, I'm gonna spend my time here as we watch these next bunch of games looking at the uh looking at the stuff for tomorrow so appreciate y'all jumping in definitely subscribe to that page i know we're going strong as of late uh so i want to keep going with y'all too I, I might be back with a stream tomorrow if i am i would definitely make it clear on uh on the, the on the twitters as well as the uh, uh on the the video i'll put out for you tonight because i got one coming out tonight looking at tomorrow's slate let's get these winners let's keep getting this money we'll show you one more time just that i feel really good about the way that we've been making picks this is the record for the year as you can see uh and this is uh something i'm proud to keep building it that's 36.2 on the props right there i do want to get that to 40 by the time we're done here so that's going to be what i plan on getting to uh in the next couple of days like i said appreciate y'all mightily seeing a lot of you guys in here uh, a lot lately i keep promising that discord it's coming the website's almost up as well so best of luck tonight y'all and until i do see you next happy betting